Hey ho glue sniffers, it's time to paint some figures again. Today we will do some duck guys for my North African diorama. They will be done entirely with acrylics and we will be talking about what paint to use, how to prepare it and where to put it. Let's go to work. The video about building and modifying those Tamiya styrene figures hit more than 40,000 views, so I think you should check it out. Like always, everything was mounted on handles and washed with isopropanol. For the first time, I tried Mr. Surfacer 1200 with the airbrush. And while using it, I was thinking, where was I until now? It was tinted with Mr. Leveling Thinner, roughly one part paint to three parts thinner, and with this kind of mix you can't go wrong. Thin coats, heavy coats, high pressure, low pressure, the result will be great in the end. Now we will start with the yellow uniform color. I have a duck figure painting set from Amo and pale yellow green was my choice. I chose the airbrush because those Amo figure paints can be tricky for base painting with the brush. Add 6 drops of Mr. Leveling for one drop of paint and airbrushing them will be a breeze. Just be sure to apply multiple thin coats in order to obtain a flat finish. Now some masking is needed before the green jackets are done. The masking putty is amazing. Just make a kind of blanket, put it in place and then do the fine work with the toothpick. Don't go crazy, we will repair minor overspray later. The green color is actually a field grey shadow from the same set. The procedure is the same as for the yellow one. Again, thin coats application is crucial for a flat finish. While I'm unwrapping the figures like Christmas presents, I will invite you to check out my Patreon page. It costs less than $5 per month and now there is also a 7 day free trial period. As you can see, the team is getting bigger. Thank you guys for your support. And I think that it's time to switch to brushes. Now we will quickly go through the base painting of all the gear. I used khaki for the anklets and raw amber for the shoes. With these figures I decided to base paint all the details first. Russian uniform was used for the broadbacks and the MP40 pouches. Next time I will try to paint the gear separately and we will see which approach is better and quicker. Field grey was the color for the gas mask containers. Those colors are not the only right choice for duck figures, but they aren't wrong either. Just a small amount of water was used for thinning in order to obtain good coverage. Flat earth was the color for the water canteen. For red leather parts mahogany brown was used. We are talking about pouches, holsters and belts. Iraqi sand was my choice for the webbing. Don't worry if you put some paint on the uniform. And finally all the metal stuff was painted in neutral grey. I started finishing the helmets because usually I run out of energy for those small things in the end. The base color was the same as for the uniforms. I was adding sunny skin tone for the highlights and black for the shadows. Those two colors somehow worked for the helmets, but later with the uniforms I came to the conclusion that they are not good at all for altering yellow paint, so forget about them. The goggles were painted with Iraqi sand. And now we will do the green glass effect. I started with some metallic color. And then I filled them with some glossy green paint that was mixed from Amo Lime Green and some gloss varnish. The mix was thinned down with water and applied several times. I quickly glued the helmets to the finished heads. By the way, the tutorial about painting those is also on my channel. And I think it's a good one, so be sure to check it out too. Now we will simulate some chipping, which is kind of iconic for those yellow helmets. Before I even started, I already knew that I would exaggerate the chipping, so I wasn't bothering too much about this step. Just take a dark brown paint, my choice was German camo black brown, and do some scratches here and there. I also had a reference photo for this step. And my prediction was totally right, god I love to be right. Luckily for me, my mentor Tommaso came in with a nice way to fix the overdone effect. I just took some thick base paint and trimmed the chips. Easy peasy. Our helmets are done, so now we can finally move on to the uniforms. So here we have our figures with the base colors in place. Ok, 
I did the anklets and the shoes off camera, but it was boring anyway. I had quite a hard time with the two all yellow guys, so now I think that we can talk about those yellow pants. First of all, I took the base color and did some retouching of the overspray. Yellow is one of the hardest paints when it comes to highlights and shadows. I learned that the hard way after losing half a day struggling because I wasn't using the right colors. I called my mentor. First he was laughing and then he gave me some tips. So, for highlights we need a bright off-white tone and for shadows we need a kind of light brown tone. Pale sand and English uniform were in my drawer, so I went with them. Let's mix some highlights. First highlight, two parts base, one part pale sand. Second highlight, one part base, one part pale sand. The difference must be visible. When you have the mixes, it's time for thinning. Another trick for yellow is that the paint should be a little thicker than for the other colors. Here I was adding too much water. The consistency that I was using was something about this. Now we should apply the first highlight. Put it on all the exposed parts and don't be shy. Nice wide areas. Let's take a look. For the second highlight the approach is similar, but now we are applying the paint to a smaller area, pointing towards the most exposed parts. We will take a look at this too. Now we will mix the first shadow. Again some base color and a small bit of English uniform. There is not enough difference, so let's add another bit of English uniform. Ok, now the water. Let's check the consistency. It's ok for yellow tones. You will see the difference with other colors later. Before the application I will show you a theory diagram that helped me a lot in understanding where the highlights and the shadows should go. Here you can see a fold in a uniform if we were dealing with just one highlight and one shadow. And here is the same fold with the two highlights and two shadow system that we are using. Bottom line, don't use washes for shadows, because they will end up where the base color should be. And another tip, the strongest shadow downstairs should meet the strongest highlight upstairs. Let's go to practice. I know that theory is one thing and practice is another, but if you keep those theory bits in mind and at least try to implement them, you will end up with a better result, that's for sure. You just need a lot of practice. For the second shadow, more English uniform is used. The amount of water was the same. Here you can see the difference with the first shadow. Let's put it on. As you can see, I'm using a smaller brush now. The places are the same as before, just the area is smaller, pointing towards the darker parts. Keep the paint well mixed all the time. Now the colors are in place, and we will add the third outlining shadow. This one should be like dirty water, so we will start with water, add two brush loads of second shadow, and then just a small bit of black. You can see how it is on the paper. This one was applied with the needle brush in all the deepest crevices. You can also use it for filling all those small detail lines on the uniform. This step will bring the figure to life. Now the yellow pens are done. And here are the tones that we used. 
let's move to the green jackets. For the highlights we will be using sunny skin tone from Valeo. The rest is the same as before, but here you should use more water. On the jackets you can concentrate more on the exposed features of the uniform, like pockets, great tags and collars. But don't forget the other exposed parts, such as the whole upper part of the arm or the top part of the shoulders. Usually, with the first highlight, if you don't see a lot of difference, you're probably on the right way. Second highlight. Same places, in smaller areas. Here is another trick. Where the brush stroke ends, which means that you remove the brush from the figure, is where the strongest trace of paint will be. That means that you should always move the brush towards the maximum highlight or shadow. Those are small but quite important tips. Now you can already see some difference, but shadows will bring some real life to the figure. For green shadows I was using US Dark Green. I added a bit of it to the base color for the first shadow. Again. Keep in mind that it should be like dirty water. We will be basically outlining all the uniform features with this first shadow. Nice white strokes, so there will be place for the second stronger shadow. That way you will end up with a nice transition. second shadow, pure US dark green this time. Repeat the process of the first shadow, but the strokes should be more narrow. Before the final outlining, I corrected the highlights again. You can always do this if you feel something is missing. The mix was the second highlight again. Let's finish those jackets with the final outlining shadow. Some black was added to the second shadow mix and we are ready to go. As you can see, this step really adds depth and life to the figures. And the uniforms are more or less done. Now we will do some gear and later we will finish the uniforms with the final details. For the metal parts I started with the black wash in order to obtain strong shadows. Then I did the highlights with some dry brushing. The final step was some worn metal effect with a simple HB pencil. The other gear, broad bags, pouches and water canteens was done the same way as the uniforms, but I was only using one highlight and one outlining shadow. Now we will bring out those buttons with some pale sand. Also the white insignia was painted in pale sand. If the detail is there, at least try to paint it. No worries if it isn't perfect, you will be rewarded in the end. Some life was added to the webbing with the highlight. Pale sand was added to Iraqi sand. The same mix was used on the helmets too. Slowly but surely we are getting there. I think that our guys need some heads. Just cut away the toothpick, put some medium CA in the hole and put the head in place. Of course, some dry fitting is welcome before you switch to glue. Now they can think. I'm not sure if that was so important back in the day, but they can shoot, which was very important. So it's weapons time. The video about painting those is already on my channel, so go and check it out, when you finish this of course. Just put a small amount of medium CA in the hand and put the weapon into place. Some retouchments and he is good to go. 
Now they are ready for the North African sun. Let me know if you find this tutorial useful. Next time I will try to do a better job, I promise. Until then, stay healthy, stay cool and put some glue on the styrene too. Bye.